Great. So good evening, everybody. Um, since we have many new spaces, um, my name is Laura Davis. I'm the chair of the Transportation Advisory Committee. Um, and for the first hour of our Transportation Advisory Committee meeting tonight, um, we're having a joint meeting with the Climate Action Committee, who is hybrid. So that is why we have a hybrid group from the townhouse joining us. Um, both of our committees um, have responsibilities related to tra transforming our transportation system. So we thought a joint meeting would be in order. So I'm gonna call the Transportation Advisory Committee to order, and then I'm gonna hand it over to Brad to call the Climate Action Committee to order. Um, so the Transportation Committee members that are here are Nick, if you'd like to. Here. Uh, Mark. Here. Dan. Here. Phil. I'm here. I believe that Mariana has not joined us yet, um, but we do have a quorum and then I'm I'm here as well, Laura Davis. So I will hand it over to um, uh, Brad to call the their meeting to order as well. Yes, uh, the uh, October uh, meeting of the Climate Action Committee uh, uh, present here is uh, Karen, Janet, Cheryl, Jerry, myself in person, and then we have Gavin, I believe, there, and Shay. Yes, I'm here. Yep, I'm here. Okay, excellent. And uh, Courtney, I'll be right back. in a moment. Uh, thanks for arranging this uh, joint meeting. I think this is going to be very interesting to us. It's an important part of uh, what we're working on for the Climate Action Plan. Yes, thank you for being so flexible and jumping in um, on our meeting. Um, it worked out well. We both had meetings scheduled for tonight. Um, I also want to acknowledge that we have um, several members of town staff joining us tonight. Um, I see here we've got Aaron Stevens, the Senior Planner for Transportation and Mobility. Um, we've got Steve Dukerin, our town engineer. We have Alan Cathcart, who's head of public works. Um, Eric Sims is our town sustainability director, and he's there in person, I believe. Um, Sorry if I missed anybody. Um, and then uh, we also have Megan uh, Zamudo tonight, who is our new deputy town manager. Um, and so I want to give her a few minutes to introduce herself because she's recently joined um, uh, the town of Concord to all of our benefits. So I'm just going to hand it over to Megan for a second. Thank you so much. And and I'm also grateful for a joint committee because I, I did go to one TAC meeting, but this is my first time with the Climate Action Group. So hello to all of you, nice to meet you. My name is Megan Zamudo, I'm the Deputy Town Manager. I started with the Town of Concord in April and um, I recently was appointed the head of uh, the Department of Planning and Land Use, which includes planning, um, natural resources, health and building. So that's part of my portfolio along with economic vitality and sustainability. So as you see, a lot of the work that I um, kind of oversee and manage has a lot to do with transportation and um, the study in particular. So I, I'm very excited to hear from all of you tonight. And I know there's a tight timeline, so I won't take up too much time here. But um, one of the things that I've been looking at is kind of diving into the Transportation Advisory Committee and understanding your charge and how you were formed and how you can best serve the town um, through your role of um, dedicated volunteers. And so I just appreciate you all taking the time to meet on a regular basis to advise the town manager's office of um, transportation initiatives that we should be working on. And you know, a great example of how the Transportation Advisory Committee and town staff can work together is this study that's coming up um, and, and really kicking off now. And so, um, you know, we have we have members of the team here. We have Steve Dukren, who's leading the project. We have Aaron Stevens also working on it closely. And um, we're really trying to look at this as how can we get the best investment? Uh, this is a this is quite an investment for the town of Concord. And how can we get the best product that is going to help guide um, the whole town in, in years to come? And so I'm looking forward to working with all of you to hear about, um, you know, how you think, how you think we can achieve that. And so I look, look forward to the rest of the meeting and thanks for the time. Thanks so much, Megan. 
Um, just since um, we have so many visitors, I just want to give a brief introduction to what we're here to discuss right now, which is the transportation and comprehensive transportation and mobility study. Um, so just a brief background, and then I'm going to hand it over to our consultants from Stantec, who are going to walk us through timeline, overview, goals, um, and lead us in a discussion and answer questions. Um, so when Concord completed Envision Concord, our comprehensive long range plan, um, the community articulated a really big picture goal for mobility and transportation. Um, and quoting from, from the report, it was to reduce motor vehicle dependence and traffic volume within Concord and encourage more environmentally sustainable, uh, a more environmentally sustainable blend of transportation modes um, to, while also protecting the character of the town and reducing the need for parking. Um, so the goal for this new study is really to help us hammer out a roadmap. How do we get to that place um, with policies, projects, actions that are going to help us achieve that big picture goal? Um, so we are working with a great team from Stantec on this project, um, and we're really fortunate to be able to tap into their experiences working with other communities on similar projects. Um, now, tonight's meeting, we're running on a tight timeline. We've scheduled an hour joint meeting, so we want to make sure we get through the presentation and then folks have an opportunity to ask questions. I'm sorry if you can hear my five-year-old in the background. He's downstairs. Um, so uh, uh, I ask that you write down questions, comments, feedback um, as we're going through the presentation um, so that we can have a full Q&A session at the end. Um, and I want to make sure we can get through the whole project overview because I think that will answer a lot of people's questions um, just by going through the whole overview. I am going to take public comment at the end, Ed. Um, uh, we're, we're on a very tight timeline tonight, but um, we will get to public comment at the end. Oh, do you need yeah. hearing, assist hearing assistance? Do we, have, um, sub uh, do we have closed captioning for this meeting, Aaron? Is that possible to turn on? Um, yes, it's typically turned on by the, uh, the participant. So let me figure out how to do it on my end. Okay, great. Sorry, Ed. Thank you for, thank you for raising that. Um, all right. Uh, I'm with that, I'm going to hand it over to Katrina and Ralph from Stantec and, um, let them, uh, launch into their, uh, overview here. Thanks, Laura. Um, Aaron, I know you're also figuring out the closed captioning. Would you be able to enable me for screen share? Uh, but while Aaron's doing that, I'll just um, have myself and Ralph introduce ourselves. Um, so my name is Katrina Meyer. I'm a transportation planner and I'm acting as the project manager for this project. Um, Ralph and I are both based out of Boston. We've been working closely together on lots of similar studies, and we're really thrilled to get to know Concord a little bit better. I know Ralph has worked there a number of years ago. So Ralph, you want to give yourself a quick intro? Sure thing. Thank you, Katrina. And, and hello, everybody. Yes, if I look familiar, um, I was the project manager for the parking plan that was done I don't even want to say how long ago yet, uh, but uh, more than five years ago in Concord. And we're, we're glad to be here tonight uh, presenting to this group. We're, we're just in the beginning stages of this process. And Katrina is going to walk you through a little bit uh, about kind of what the plan is, and how it's structured and what the tasks are, and, and really some ways that, that we're hoping to get you know input from everybody uh, here as we advance the process. So thank you all. Um, yeah, so here's our uh, quick outline for today. We're going to bulk of it. We're just going to kind of go over the scope, kind of what we plan on doing, and then hope to have a little bit of back and forth about some of the goals um, for town staff and folks who were at our kickoff on September 18th. We came to town in person and basically had a very similar conversation. Um, we already did our intros of our team. I'll just note that um, Liza Cohen, Cohen um, some of you folks may remember her from uh, if you're part of the interview phase, um, and you'll probably see her again next year, but she is on parental leave, um, but she'll be back um, and helping me and Ralph lead this project in January. 
Um, so I'm going to start off with the schedule. Uh, this is a lot to see on one page, um, but I'll break it down task by task. Um, the main sort of guiding piece of this study is the engagement. So I'll, I'll kind of talk through that overall. Um, we are planning for about a one-year process, so kicking off this fall and wrapping up next fall. Um, over the course of, you know, September, October, November here this year, we're doing a lot of the background, getting to know the community, um, reviewing all of the past plans in Vision Concord, we know is a big pillar for setting this study up, um, getting data together. And we're planning for a public meeting in a few weeks um, that will be of a similar nature, seeking input and ideas, recognizing that a lot of input has been given in previous projects, but trying to go uh, one level deeper. And that's something we'll talk about today. Early next year in the uh, winter slash spring, um, we're gonna be coming back to the community with some sort of alternatives um, for um, transportation changes. So not um, final recommendations, but going in more into the weeds, like if we invest here, here's what that means. What do you think of that? Um, so that's what's going to be happening around February, March of next year. And then by June, July, uh, we're hoping to come with more finalized recommendations and have another phase of public engagement um, where we can get final um, input and all of that um, as we look to finalize the plan next September. Um, so that's an overview of the big schedule. And I'm going to go task by task to really give you a feel for what these different phases mean. Starting with visioning. Um, so this process really continues um, from, you know, what basically when we started the project to after um, our existing conditions analysis and our first public meeting is concluded. Uh, this is about setting goals and objectives in order to guide our process. And it includes gathering data from the past plans, as well as what we hear in phase one of community engagement, as I was saying. Um, as I'm sure folks on this call um, are familiar with, you know, it's key to set these goals and objectives so we can all get on the same page. And then as we come up with recommendations, you know, we stay on the same page and we tie recommendations back to you know, why we're doing this, what we're trying to achieve, um, including things that came out of Envision Concord already. For existing conditions, um, we have two, two tasks here. The first one is kind of about existing infrastructure. So what you know, sidewalk, net, what the sidewalk network looks like, what the biking opportunities look like today, um, you know, how, what is the transit landscape, what with the commuter rail station. So this is all about what is the transportation infrastructure that Concord has today. And then task three pivots to the user experience. How are people getting around Concord? This is where we'll look at transit ridership I'll, I say we will, we are, you know, already diving into transit ridership, diving into some travel pattern data and, you know, seeing what's happening today. How are people interacting with the transit landscape? Um, that brings us to task four, which is engagement. Um, I've already touched on some of this but we've divided this up into three phases. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a deeper dive on what types of engagement are included in each phase. All three phases include a steering committee meeting as well as a public meeting slash workshop. Um, the steering committee, um, this is, like I said, part of all three phases. Um, and this is gonna be a group of town stakeholders. It may likely, almost definitely probably include some folks on this call, um, but you know, reaching outside of you know, the climate and transportation folks to other related um, committees and town sort of stakeholders. So this group will be basically through the all three phases consulted before, right before the public meeting. So sort of to give this group an opportunity to weigh in on what we're about to share at the public meeting before it kind of goes wide open to the public. Um, 
So this is something that's going to be assembled uh, pretty soon here uh, as we get ready for the first public meeting. Uh, so public meeting, um, I'm just showing a series of images to give you a flavor of the type of public meeting slash workshop that we are aiming for. Um, we are planning to do more of a drop-in format rather than, you know, public meeting, public presentation followed by public comment. Um, we're going to have boards and tables and lots of markers and sticky notes and sticky dots. Uh, and we're going to have Stantec staff sort of stationed around the room at these different stations in order to get this input. So, you know, not a formal presentation, but more like a workshop kind of format. Um, so that's what these pictures give you an idea of. For the first public meeting, we are scheduled for October 17th, um, 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. at the Harvey Wheeler Community Center. Um, so we're excited to have that um, locked in and we're working on preparing the various materials. As I mentioned when I shared the schedule, the goal of this first phase is we want to learn from the community and we want the community to learn a little bit from us. So a back and forth here. Um, we're going to be asking for input on opportunities and constraints. We're going to be asking about key destinations that folks want to travel to and by what mode. Um, we're going to ask folks to do some ranking kind of activities. And we're also going to be sharing back some of our existing conditions findings. Um, so some of the ridership and crash maps and sidewalk maps and things like that um, so that it can be a back and forth conversation. And looking at that data can you know, maybe inspire some ideas or issues as people provide feedback. Um, the first phase also includes a public survey, which I know some folks on this call or on this meeting have seen a draft of. Um, so I think uh, we'll come back to that uh, later on. But basically, we're in concert with this public workshop. We're launching a survey um, that will be in parallel to the public meeting uh, and ask similar questions. There'll be a similar mapping activity and give folks a chance to um, not only provide ideas, but also input on how they travel today and you know what would their preferred mobility choices be. So that's a, a little bit more detail about phase one, in part because it's coming up here in a few weeks um, and underway, really. I'll go through phase two and three as well in a little less detail. Um, so phase two, this we're talking early next year, around February. And in addition to a public workshop, phase two also includes some stakeholder roundtables. Um, so, you know, through the steering committee, through presentations like this one tonight, we're engaging a lot of the folks who are already engaged, um, you know, on a town volunteer basis. But we want to give another chance for key stakeholders to come together and weigh in on the plan. Um, so that might include folks, you know, in the business community, in the local tourism community, are there key institutions? Um, so, you know, we'll work with the town um, and folks on the steering committee to figure out who those people are, but we're planning a few roundtables, you know, in order to foster an environment for that more in-depth feedback. And then we'll do another public workshop. This one, the focus will be on the results of all of our analysis, you know, what we have kind of came up with as the key needs in the community based on the analysis and the feedback, and then going into some of those alternatives. You know, here are some ideas, not formal recommendations, but some ideas for folks to weigh on when it comes to transportation changes. When we get to public three, this is where, you know, we really have that set of draft recommendations and actions that we're looking for concrete input on. Um, that concludes my, my deep dive into the engagement. So going back into like the deliverables and the final tasks of the project now. Um, so task five is that alternatives assessment, which I just was mentioning about preliminary list of changes, and we'll be looking at um, some trade-offs there. Um, 
But task six, this is really the meat of it. Um, these are the things that we hope um, you know, will be very useful to the town going forward. These are the things um, that you all are going to kind of take away and, and help live on after this process concludes. Um, so there are four key things on here that I'll run through. The uh, first one is the multimodal action plan. Um, this, I believe, is designed to build on the build upon the um, complete streets prioritization list that was completed um, pre-pandemic a couple of years ago now. And the purpose of this list is to be short-term action projects. Um, so, you know, specific locational recommendations. Um, that we've identified as high priority and or low hanging fruit for the town to start acting on in the near term. A lot of these we're imagining will be infrastructure, you know, roads that would change, uh, but they could be other, you know, other types as well in terms of policy changes. But the focus of that list is going to be highly actionable. Moving on to the next one, the comprehensive transportation strategic plan. This is widening the lens a little bit. Um, so these are the more long-term and policy-oriented recommendations, you know, like over time, increase funding for X, um, change how the city approaches X, or sorry, the town approaches X, things that might take a little bit longer time um, and be, you know, less actionable in the near term. Um, so those are the two major like buckets of recommendation that we'll be putting forward. Um, we'll also have grants in mind as we put these things together. Um, so when we're concluding, we'll be in conversations with the town about, um, you know, potential grants and teeing up some of the materials prepared um, in these final phases for grant applications um, so that it can be compatible. compatible. Finally, um, we have set on this list to deliver a multimodal best practices guide slash design manual. Um, so this is, you know, less of a list of recommendations and more of a tool to guide future decision making. Um, so that will include, you know, in X situation, how do you handle X mode of transportation or X type of conflict? So just some guiding principles to help with decision making going forward. And then finally, we have task seven. This is basically our project management task and our plan development task where we'll bring all of these things together, all of those key deliverables that I just listed out for task six, along with all the research and everything into one final planning document. So that's the big overview of both our process and what we hope that the town will get out of this process once it concludes. I'm going to go briefly like into the goals. I mentioned task one is the visioning and, and that's a, a long process as we kind of learn from each other and go forward. Um, but I just want to highlight that um, Envision Concord really lays the foundation for all of this. Laura quoted um, the multimodal goal right at the start um, of this presentation. And so everything that we're doing is building from that work that's already been done. And we know that through the formation of TAC, through the MBTA community's work, through the complete streets prioritization plan, <clears throat> thinking about transportation is ever present. Um, and so we're doing our best to plug into all these things that are ongoing and use them to inform our process here with the um, comprehensive transportation study. Um, in the discussions that we've had so far, you know, we've heard that it'll be very important um, to focus on implementation. We know that Concord is committed to um, achieving the goals set out in Envision Concord. And so, you know, what we've heard so far is that it's very important. What we do here is actionable. Um, and then when it comes to that design guideline and decision-making process, we've also been hearing that it's important that what we produce from this process allows for more smooth transportation-related decision-making in the future as things come up. 
<clears throat> so I just want to highlight those as key takeaways from our discussions we've had so far with town staff. Uh, and then just to kind of you know start to show you some of the things we've put together, um, we're developing uh, all sorts of maps that you'll see at the public meeting upcoming. Um, so here is our our base our base map that we're gonna be building stuff on top of. And then we're working with the town to get a bunch of existing conditions data. Much of this has already been delivered to us um, that we're starting to put together in advance of the public meeting. Um, so with that, um, I think I will turn it over to Ralph uh, and then Laura to see um, how we want to open this up to discussion. So Ralph, actually first, you, you wanted to add anything to the presentation? On my unmute button. Um, no, I, I think you did a really good job of kind of covering what this is. And I guess we'll apologize into the deep dive of the scope, but it's important to understand, you know, I think what this is and what it's not. Right, and that, that's why we wanted to go through things. And there's some very specific outcomes that the town is looking for. And we're, we're very much targeting those. And, and I would think of this, you know, as much more about the prioritization and the policy and the identification component as opposed to, you know, that you're gonna get 50 specific designs that are gonna be implemented the next day. Right. This is this is the exercise to go through to figure out which of those are the most important and how we can collectively be better about about delivering those. So um just I think that that's really the reason for the deep scope dive here. Thank you so much, um, Katrina and Ralph. Um, we're gonna open it up to discussion here. And th the first thing that I think we should do is go through with clarifying questions. So if you have questions about specific elements of the trans of the plan, um, that would be great. I see that we have a, a question from our select board liaison um, and our our assistant town manager. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let uh, our deputy town manager. So I'm gonna let them um, go first, and then we'll do committee members. Terry, do you want to go first? Okay. Um... This sounds like an absolutely terrific plan. I do have one concern, mm -hmm. which is um, that meeting coming up on the 17th. Um, you want to get a good turnout of citizens. And I've seen absolutely no publicity. Um, Terry, I'm going to ask, can we, we're going to talk about um, engagement in a little bit. We're, right. It's actually a, another a, another agenda item on our, on our agenda. Oh, okay. Today. Well, but I'm just I, very concerned about that. Um, that yes. you want I was hanging posters today, but we're going to talk about that right. later. Um, <laughs> Megan, if you want to ask your question, then we're going to go to Nick. And, sure, and I'm sorry to I'm sorry to trump the committee members. Um, but I'll be brief. My my questions. I have two questions. Um, my first one is, could you expand a little bit on what an alternatives assessment is? It's I feel like I am a little out of the loop on some of the terms and it's like alternatives to what is is my question uh number one good question and um number two when we get a multimodal action plan will you be giving um cost estimates for accomplishing those goals thank you um so i can answer those um as far as the alternatives yeah that that is a great question i think the way to think of it is um trade-offs for different types of recommendations. Um, so our plan is to come with to that meeting with some draft potential kind of packages of recommendations and say, here's how these um, align with the goals that we set. And here are some trade-offs. You know, if you do this, uh, then you have to, it has this impact on another mode of transportation. Um, so, you know, if we're, I know we have the climate folks on the call, you know, you might be familiar with the alternatives analysis as part of environmental review. We're certainly not going that deep. Um, it's just kind of a high level way for us to start vetting um, ideas and recommendations and compare them against the project goals. 
like ideas and recommendations, like are we talking like specific projects or like we should come up with a policy for something? Like I'm just feeling like I need a little bit more specificity of some examples of what it could be. I, I, I think it's both it's both of those things, right? And exactly the form is it's hard to predict at this point in time. I think just just as an example, there may be some policy statements or recommendations that are things like we should spend more money building sidewalks in Concord, right? And maybe there's a number to that. We're spending this much money now and we should spend this much money in the future. And when we spend this much money, these are the 25 places that are the most important for the following reasons, right? So it's it's some combination of those of those kinds of things. And that's, you know, that, that's just an example. Um, I think the kind of thing that we would talk about. So it's it's sort of both. Um, and, you know, I think we'd very much like to not make this just a wish list of everything that anybody ever could want to see in Concord. I think we want the wish list, but in order for that to be actionable, it's got to, you know, you've got to make some of those trade-offs that Katrina was talking about. We have to decide collectively that, some things or some some approaches take more immediate priority than others for the following reasons. Uh, and that's that's you know, it'll be a long, messy process, but that's that's generally great. I'm gonna go to Nick now. I, I want to make sure we get to Me Megan's second question about the cost estimates. Mm -hmm. Um we're going to be providing high level planning planning level, high level cost estimates. Um, so things won't be fully engineered out as part of this project. So we won't have um, super detailed cost estimates, but there will be a level of cost estimation. Nick, you're muted. Nick. Uh, just a question. Okay. Um, yeah, so I was encouraged to see something about a steering committee. Um, it's good that that's potentially very good. A little concerned about the size of it. Um, but um, the concept of involvement from various committees and town departments in developing the plan is obviously important. However, on Thursday, I re re received a draft survey and was told that input from the Transportation Advisory Committee would be given consideration. Well, that's very nice. That doesn't sound like very meaningful involvement to me. Now, the Transportation Advisory Committee has a charge from the select board to give it advice on policy and, and programs. Uh, so clearly we have a vital interest in what's gonna happen. I'm very concerned about that survey. We're, you're pushing to have a meeting to start a serious dialogue with the community in two weeks, two weeks from today. In my opinion, that survey was horrible. I don't know what was worse, what was missing from it or what was in it. Okay, I think there's a very serious problem. And the fact that TAC has had virtually no involvement in this project until now is very worrisome. That's it. I didn't hear a question in there. Um, so I'm gonna say that, uh, do, 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 are there I'll, any- I'll, I'll, I'll pose a question. The, the question is what's gonna happen with the very long feedback that I gave on, on that survey? Because there are a lot of sub substantive issues in there, okay? So I think the question is how is the survey going to be developed. I, I do want to clarify that a first draft of a survey went out for feedback from all the TAC committee members. Um, it was a first draft, and uh, I think all of us had lots of feedback on it. Um, uh, and um, I didn't pick up on that word choice when when the email went out, Nick. I um, uh, But I, I think that, Erin, if you want to address how we're going to continue refining the survey, that might be helpful. Sure. Yeah. So, um, Nick, your your comments were were certainly taken, and we're going to be looking at those. Um, we didn't have time to create a, a second survey in time for today's meeting. It's something that we're going to be uh, looking to launch the survey 
for the 17th. Um, so this is something that's going to go through a couple of different iterations. And remember, this is just sort of the, um, the baseline initial survey that we're going to be continuing to, uh, there, there will be other surveys, I guess. We'll, we'll, we'll be doing other information gathering, and um, this is not the only opportunity for people to provide feedback. Um, this is just supposed to be sort of like the, um, the, very, the very baseline, and it's something that we will continue to be looking at. There will be a couple of other iterations before the survey gets finalized and the TAC will be thoroughly involved in that, I, I promise. Well, then you have to explain that whole data collection process so that we can understand the context in which we have to observe, uh, review that survey. Something is woefully lacking here. So we will be talking a little bit more about the survey during the, um, the second part of the meeting today. Um, right now, we're going to, I think, try to focus back onto the um, the presentation and the um, onto the, the plan as a whole. Thanks, Aaron. Um, uh, Mark, uh, I, uh, uh, we have two Marks with their hands up. Um, I'll follow this first. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, Mark, I'm, I'm going to take your question, but I do want to, I'm going to have committee members ask questions um, next and and uh, uh, and hold the rest of the public comments and liaison comments. And uh, actually, Mark, would you mind holding yours for a little while? Because a real I, simple question and, okay. and <laughs> an actual answer. Just wanted to know whether, um, picking up on where Megan was going about costs, will there be an assessment of the existing conditions of our transportation infrastructure that includes some kind of cost estimates along the lines of what it might take to bring them up to um, sufficient or standard? In other words, a gradation of, of actually how good any given mode of transportation is. And you know, I hope that could be included and that's my comment. Yeah, I, th I think that. Sure. Yeah, I think I think that that makes sense. I, I I don't know how in depth we would do it on the cost in terms of the cost of you know every single facility, um, but I think certainly identifying those gaps where things aren't up to standard and what it would take to uh, upgrade certain areas. I, I would say that that's within the realm. Um, but yeah, happy to kind of flesh that out as we go along. All right, the other mark. Okay, the other mark. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I think three um, quick questions. Um, one is, is there an overwhelming reason that we can't have the October 17th meeting and then uh, finalize the survey and um, distribute it, tell people then it's coming so we can make it um, uh, better? And um, as I think Nick said, is it, is it, have we decided what the um, logistics is? Is it an online only survey? Is it a paper survey? Is the paper survey of like five different types depending who fills it out? Um, the second question, not survey related, is um, is Stantec aware and taking into account the fact that, um, you know, staff will manage Stantec as a consultant? And in my experience, consultants always benefit from being. Uh, questioned and refocused, et cetera, to get the best possible possible product and collaboration between the town and Stantec. But in terms of the steering committee or involvement of committees, um, I wonder if Stantec is aware of the fact that as a combination of the open meeting law and the fact that um, committees only meet on a certain basis, like once a month or something like that, that one representative from a committee cannot weigh in on anything in terms of speaking for the committee, unless that information has been presented to the committee at an open public meeting. So um, I just wanna kind of bring that out to make sure Stendek is aware of that. And then the last thing I wanted to say is, is it possible that in terms of trying to better serve all uses of transportation, especially in dealing with the public, can we, um, you know, how difficult would it be to substitute plain English like different modes of transportation or all users of different modes of transportation for sort of jargon buzzwords like multimodal that I think will confuse some people because it sounds as if you're talking about a, a um, uh, triathlon or something like that. Thanks. Thanks, 
And Katrina, don't feel like Katrina and Ralph, please jump in with answers to questions. I I don't you don't have to wait for me. And, and by the way, answers can come later as you have them. If you have anything to say right now, that's great. If not, as long as they keep coming, that's great. Thank you. I'll, I'll just say very quickly, I think as we're preparing materials for a public meeting, we're trying to make them much more relatable to the, the average folks. This is a sophisticated group. I think we understand this right now. You're seeing much of the same language that we showed to city staff or likewise sophisticated as it goes further. That's something we try is really hard to be mindful of um, both when we're there in person talking to people and when we have materials that live without us. Yeah, and I think we'll dive a little bit deeper into those engagement questions once you get to that part of the discussion. Phil, go ahead. You said Phil, not Bill, right? <laughs> Thanks. So um, uh, welcome to Concord. And uh, I'm glad that you're here. Um, my question is um, to the both of you, have you had an opportunity to meet with the DPW director and the town engineer and have uh, they provided you with the study that they prepared with respect to um, the costs to bring our road network up to snuff? Um, that was a study, and um, Steve and Alan, you can correct me, I think that was from about two years ago, um, and um, it basically was a um, an analysis of the costs of not necessarily improving um, the safety or, uh, a, a, you know, any particular uh, change to the road network, but simply to bring it up to... Um, acceptable design standards. Um, so that's the first question. Have you or do you have you present been presented with that material? Do you have it in mind? And then the second question is, um, if you have been presented with that material, has it already been taken into consideration with respect to how to finance the improvements that you'll be recommending? Um, because uh, at least from my perspective after, uh, un understanding what DPW has put together, um, really there was no money to finance any particular improvements. Uh, and at, at the moment, we are now in a declining situation. So um, we need to have, I think, some assistance in uh, maybe fresh ideas in how to um, uh, strategically invest or get assistance with regard to our transportation network. Yeah, happy to have Alan or, or Steve weigh in. Yeah. We have a close coordination with them, that's for sure. Yes, yeah, um, uh, Bill, thank you. I'm gonna let Steve give you the specifics, but very important, and I appreciate you remembering now, these are messages that we've been trying to consistently relay, and we are actually in a budget cycle, you know, our capital planning as we speak, and Steve Dukran has been working very diligently on it, so he can probably give you a, you know, better sense of the specifics, but, you know, it's a great, great question, and Steve, if you can just sort of give an overview of that, it'd be great. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Steve Dukran, town engineer. Um, <clears throat> I, I think what uh, Phil is referring to is uh, <clears throat> our capital planning that we have done for the last couple of years, showing uh, what our needs are uh, in the street, um, you know, pavement management, sidewalk improvements, um, drainage, and so on. The uh, the only area that we have really done any real uh, evaluation with accuracy is really in pavement management. We are still building our asset management program to incorporate the remaining assets like sidewalks, signals, signs, and so on. But in pavement management, we have done that study that Phil referred to, and it had shown that our pavement uh, condition index has been declining and it costs us, um, it will cost us uh, a, a rather large investment going forward. 
um, I, Stantec, I don't know if you're interested in that. We can provide that to you um, to see if you can include that as part of the, the study. I mean, I would, I would say at this stage, we're interested in everything. I, I think to the direct question, you know, we have way more questions than answers now, just as everybody else does. I think it's, it's our job right now, understand the work that the town has been doing, to understand the feedback that this group and others in Concord have given, and to organize that and to seek to make sure that, you know, if we're missing things, if things haven't been said, that we're meeting some of those requests with with whatever data we have we won't have it all at the beginning um, and then work through the process of helping you set your priorities for the future and some of those priorities are going to run headlong against funding questions and those are the kinds of things that we're going to want to work out through this i mean I, ideally a plan like this helps to put you know the 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 rationale or the request or the understanding behind, you know, what you can do with the resources that you have and why more resources may be, ne may be needed to accomplish the other things that you want to achieve. And to do that, not just by looking at transportation, but how transportation serves larger town needs, right? That's, that's what a plan like this does. Um, but yeah, there, there will be times where those trade-offs are gonna matter amongst transportation elements or amongst other things that the town spends money on um, because because they just will, right? Those, those resources are not inexhaustible. Thank you. Um, that was a great question. I'm really glad that you raised that, Phil. Um, I want to go to the room because I may be missing hands. So um, Brad, if you could facilitate some of the questions that folks in the room have? I saw your hand up, so. Janet, I, oh, go ahead. I, I just wondered how committed you were to the night of October uh, so the 17th. Well then, I'm, I'm, I'm getting confused. Uh, I'm just, there's something on the 19th and I was thinking that was gonna clash, but you're, you're planning on the 17th, correct? We had originally scheduled it for the 19th and moved it to avoid the conflict on the 19th. So that is why it's Tuesday the 17th from 6.30 to 8.30, so as not to conflict with the cell phone tower discussion, which I'm sure will be well attended and hotly debated. Okay, and the 19th is also first parish event about the climate crisis. So- uh, That one as well. <laughs> Speaker, oh, yeah. So I don't know, too many things going on in Congress. <laughs> Any, uh, I don't think there are any questions here. Um, any more questions here? Um, since there are no hands up, I'll ask my question. Um, so I think the challenge with this study will be striking the right balance between getting specific without getting lost in the weeds. You know, we have a very great. We have a big picture goal. We've asked people to weigh in on that big picture goal. It's been very well articulated and reaffirmed several times. Um, but we also don't want to get like, especially at this at this beginning stage, sucked into discussions about potholes or very specific, one specific crosswalk. Um, so I think I'd love to hear from you guys. You know, you have experience doing this in other communities. How do you especially in a public workshop, like the one that we're preparing for, how do you sort of thread that needle and get people recognizing patterns, expressing preferences that will guide us in sort of policy making and not get us sort of like sucked into a conversation about the pothole on my street or the corner that I, this one particular corner that I hate when I'm walking my dog and get people thinking more about like, what are the structural changes that will help me mode shift, which is essentially what we're trying to accomplish when we talk about enhancing multimodal transportation. Um, so I'd love to hear sort of what your what your experience is and how your public workshop on the 17th is going to help thread that needle. Uh, that, that's a really excellent question that gets right at the heart of planning. 
<laughs> I think in, in general. Um, I'm, I'll try to give a, a succinct an answer as I can. And the answer is first, you have to hear everybody, right? So we have to have avenues for people to say that and to say out loud to somebody who matters that this pothole at the end of my street is terrible and hasn't been fixed in years or whatever it happens to be. And they have to feel heard, otherwise they're not gonna participate in the process, right? I mean, I, I think that's, we, we need that feedback. We'll have online maps, we'll have the survey, we will have places for people to give comment, people will come publicly, somebody will record that, the other, like all, all those things matter. That doesn't mean we get bogged down in it. I think our job is to record those things to recognize that, and let's, let's just stick with that example, that there may be 372 people that are complaining about separate potholes on separate streets. And that is indicative of a larger problem that the town has. You know, it could be that, it could be any of a hundred other things, right? But we have to put those into some kind of structure that thinks about how the town I don't want to say can do business differently, but can at least do their business in a structured way that is responsive to the goals and priorities that a plan like this would set. So, and there's two dangers with that. One is by getting too far in the weeds and arguing about whether this pothole or that pothole is more important. The other is to live so far up here that we're arguing about policy decisions forever or priorities or goals and not making it real. So the trick I think as you were starting to identify, is to find that middle ground where we're saying, and again, I'm gonna make these words up, but it's gonna sound something like this. If we want Concord to be a place where people are comfortable walking and they can go to lots of places within 20 minutes and to feel safe and it's accessible. In order to do that, Concord must have the following things, right? We must have sidewalks that you know, allow you to you know, walk 15 minutes from your house. We must have safe crossings. It must be maintained. It must be all those things. And then if you want to do that, this is what it takes for Concord to do it. And at the current levels of spending or time or effort or whatever it is, that's going to take 10 years. And in those 10 years, we want to prioritize these places because they, you know, affect the most people target the most vulnerable users or whatever other metrics we develop through this, right? And that's the order in which we think this, the town should go. And if we want to do more, then that is the case to spend more dollars on it or more resources on it because it has been identified in a real way that's tied to something tangible and relatable to folks as opposed to just why didn't you fix this thing? So it's 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 a really tricky thing, and we're going to need the help of sophisticated folks like this that understand the language, that understand you know how the town works and how you structure these sorts of things to help keep making those cases. But that's right at the beginning. That's the feedback we're going to be looking for in the survey at the meetings, it's it's the really specific things, but it's also the higher level, these are the things we care about, maybe slightly more than other things. Um, Katrina, I don't know if that's a good explanation or not. I felt a little random. I, I, think, it's a, I think it's a great explanation, yeah. All right, well, thank you. It, it answered my question, so I think you- oh, Well, that's, there you go then. I'll take that as a win. <laughs> Um, Mark's hand is up. Go ahead. Thanks. Quick. Yeah, I'm just revisiting. So there is there is a question I would like to try to get an answer tonight, or at least some feedback, which is what I said is, you know, does this, uh, uh, you know, for to have a useful survey, have it right, sometimes takes some time. And what is the, is there an overwhelming reason we cannot um, have the survey ready to be announced on October 17th, but not, um, you know, but take the time that it, it requires to really get it kind of vetted by staff so that it, it is useful and have anybody interested, you know, here among, as, as was mentioned, sort of the more um, in, um, aware or 
people have been thinking about things, chance to kind of say, I, I, is there any question about this and what does it look like? So I, re I really think that a, a poorly structured study, uh, uh, survey, you can't, you may not even be able to fix it later with another survey. It may actually um, really confuse things. Thanks. Um, maybe, uh, well, Katrina uh, and Ralph, if you have initial thoughts on that, I'd love to hear them um, before I jump in. Yeah, I think we want to get it right. I I, I agree that, um, you know, saying that we could do another survey later is not the right solution. Um, so I think that it's it, it would be a good goal to have it at least launched by the date of the public survey or the public workshop so people can take it uh, then and there. Um, but we're open, open to feedback. Yeah, we, we haven't seen all of the comments on the draft survey yet. And I know that's, that's what Laura wants to addressed next um so yeah we want we want to do what's right here and get all the right feedback straight out of the gate and and, and i would just add to i mean there there's a i don't say a danger but there's a balance you want to strike with doing a survey in that you know you want to get useful information you want to get some insights you want to keep it brief enough that people bother to fill it out all the way to the end. Um, and I, I think at this early stage, you know, we're still looking to get sort of more general feedback and understanding on, on issues and start to engage people with the process because the survey is really just but one way that feedback will be taken through this whole entire process. I think this is a great moment to pivot and just get a little bit more information on the survey, but I do want to ask if the Climate Action Committee has sort of what you need from this process and might want to drop off and have the rest of your meeting at this point. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to keep you on survey questions. Um, I also want to, uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll let Brad or someone else from the committee respond. Um, I think I think we have enough. I mean, this is an introduction for most of us. Uh, things that came to mind that maybe we want to talk about is whether is whether this study uh, includes like the resilience of transportation over time, uh, which is something we've been thinking about in terms of of changing climate. I don't know. Um, I'm also curious. Does it uh, does it deal with transportation just within Concord or uh, are there projects that connect Concord to Acton and Bedford and Lexington that are also going to be explored on the uh, uh, in the study? Um, so for the first half of that about the resiliency, I think as we're doing this visioning, learning about the priorities, if that you know rises to the top as a town priority, which it sounds like it it does, as it does in many communities, you know, based you know, based on you know what we're all facing right now, um, then we will include that as part of the goals and objectives, and and work on evaluating um, that throughout our process, whether or not a certain investment would be climate resilient, or how can we make existing infrastructure more climate resilient? I think that's great feedback. As far as regional connections, um, this is primarily focused on Concord, but when we get into more of those strategic or policy recommendations, those could include regional connections. Like, you know, the town has forms a partnership, you know, with an adjacent town on expanding the bike share, which I just, know, is something that's already planned, but that type of a thing where it's a partnership or where it's maybe um, advocating to the T for a certain change to the commuter rail, um, you know, I, I'm not sure yet, but I think those could be part of it based on what we hear and based on what we learn, but I would say those are more in the policy strategy category than the specific action category. Yeah, thank you. Um... I'm okay with this dropping off. Yeah. Uh, you have more to do. We have more to do. Uh, thank you so much for including us on this. 
And um, uh, congratulations for getting started with this good work. So we're going to sign off here and join another Zoom link, which is in our agenda. Thank you guys so much for joining us. And and I hope I hope you can all make it to the 17th. <laughs> Put it in your calendars. Yep. All right. So with that, I think um, digging into the survey a little bit more would be great. Um, uh, and while we still have have Stantec here, um, they kindly agreed to stay for uh, a little bit of extra time to talk about the survey um, and other questions that the TAC has on that. Um, just before we sort of dive into that head first, um, I just want to I want to apologize and say that I think that there wasn't enough context sending out the survey. Um, and uh, maybe it was a better, it would have been a better choice to send it out after this presentation when we had the opportunity to have it in context. But I thought it was a better idea for us to have seen something to react to rather than trying to pull things out of the blue sky. Um, so I do want to emphasize that it's a first draft. It's an opportunity for us to have a discussion about what's missing, what seems excessive. Um, so I do want to put it in the context and also take take the responsibility for not giving folks the appropriate amount of context um, for reviewing the survey ahead of time. So I, I do apologize for that. Um, uh, do we do we want to launch into questions or um, let's 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 take questions. So Phil, go ahead um, with your question. I think your hand was up first. Thanks. This is this is not a survey specific question, so I hope it's okay. But I, I was going back to your presentation, and um, one of the um, slides, which I thought was great, was uh, it was talking about outreach to various stakeholders, and there was a pretty long list, which um, included the school department, which I which I think is excellent. Um, but one of the things that one of the stakeholders that wasn't included on that list was um was the commonwealth and uh mascot and i'm wondering if um in light of the fact that route 2 is a significant piece of infrastructure um that has you know pretty substantial impacts on multimodal transportation in this town um if it's even possible to include the state and if it is um how that happens so I was hoping you can comment on that. Um, I can comment a little bit and say that we can certainly look at adding them to our stakeholder list and um, certainly try to get them into a into a meeting or into uh, <laughs> provide some feedback. Um, we obviously Route 2 does run right through the center of Concord, and it's something that um, we have recently looked into with them and they are uh, currently working on a corridor study which includes Concord. We have not yet seen that study, but that is what we have been told. So we're waiting to hear back about that. Um, so I think that we can certainly be including those pieces of information that we have, even if we have difficulty getting them actually to the table, but we could certainly try to get them into the conversation um, and see what happens. Yeah, I, I think that would be really helpful. Um, the other um, piece of infrastructure that I think is relevant to this is the um, uh, proposed Assabet River Bridge. Uh, again, it's a it, ultimately I think it's going to be a mostly state financed project. Uh, I think I saw something recently that it's actually on the tip, uh, but you know, being on the tip and you know being closer to construction are two two very different things. But um, you know, just having that piece of infrastructure in place, I think, would make an enormous difference, assuming that um, 200 units of affordable housing are built um, at the um, uh, Baker Ave extension property, which right now, you know, is not completely foot accessible, easily foot accessible to the train station. It's not terrible, but it's, you know, certainly not as easy as it could be if there was a bridge would be, you know, an eighth of a mile instead of almost a mile of walking um, with in places, notes, good sidewalks, dangerous sidewalks, et cetera. Um, certainly, you know, handicap, not handicapped, accessible sidewalks, et cetera. 
So, uh, you know, hopefully that's the kind of thing where, um, you know, w the left hand could be induced to talk to the right hand. Thanks, Phil. Um, Nick, go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, just a suggestion, uh, the survey, I think it would be a lot easier to start surveying if we broke it up into smaller surveys aimed at particular audiences. Something like that should be examined. For instance, survey for the bicycling community as opposed to survey for some other group of people, right? Uh, but anyway, if you do something like that, you could pot potentially start surveying pretty soon and just keep the whole survey process going for longer. That's all. Since we're sort of in a discussion here, I do want to say I I I would I think we have our stakeholder roundtables planned as part of this process, which I think is a great opportunity to dig into the details with specific groups, but. I'm a cyclist, but I'm also a pedestrian and I'm also a driver. And I think that grouping people just to talk about the things that they do when a lot of this study is trying to get an understanding of why people don't do the th do other things. Um, I think it's I think we need to have sort of baseline information about like, Nick, why is it that you don't ride a bicycle? And Laura, why is it that you don't walk in this particular neighborhood? Um, you know, like, I think that we need a baseline personally. Um, and I hope that those stakeholder roundtables can serve that more sort of, OK, well, you're riding every day. Can you tell me, like, what are the things you're seeing on the road um, so that we get a Anyway, I'll stop talking, but you get the point. Um, and Mark, go ahead. Uh, uh, about the stakeholder, first of all, I don't like the word stakeholder because I don't think it really has <laughs> the right specificity, but I sort of know what people are grasping for. But um, I uh, would like to see stakeholder meetings be held in a place where the public can also observe, but not necessarily you know, be weighing in because there have been times in the past when things have been done and certain groups were reached out to anonymously. And um, I I just, you know, the part of the goal here is broad communication, bringing in a, a lot of eyes on it, a lot of people to see it and preparing for things that eventually go to town meeting, et cetera. And the earlier people understand what other people want or care about or why, um, uh, the better there. I also just wanted to mention that um, I, I had a question whether the survey is not actually one of the best places to get the sort of um, usership of different modes snapshot of the town right now. And I sent Aaron um, my um, pod at some questions, some general comments about what I think make a, are important to do in a survey for it to be effective, useful, not confusing. Um, and uh, some areas that probably need to be developed much more that I just kind of put in an outline. But anyway, I mean, you know, one of the questions I had is relating to the usership is you just ask everybody who visits town or is in town, how do you move from place to place within Concord? Please check all that apply. Walk, run, manual, wheelchair, wheelchair powered wheelchair, bicycle, pedal powered, e-bike, motorcycle, motorbike or motor scooter, personal automobile or small truck, gas or diesel, hybrid gas, electric, all electric, council on aging van, commercial ride service, such as Lyft, Uber, or taxi or other. And you can break it down if you want it into how do you shop? How do you go to medical or professional appointment? What do you do in heavy snow, bad weather, whatever. But I'm just saying that the more people in town, you could get to get have those answers by whatever means, electronic, mini user survey, what you know, whatever it is, I think that would be valuable because how else do we kind of weigh things and make sure everybody has their preferred mode of transportation or their modes um, taken care of? So just a comment. Thank you, Mark. I have a question for um, Katrina and Ralph, um, which may be a good closing question. How, um, what what are you looking for from TAC? What, what would be helpful from TAC at this stage to help prepare for 
the workshop and um, and what is what is a reasonable timeline for um, us to give you more feedback, for you to give us a second draft? Um, we do have two weeks between now and the public um, uh, meeting, and I would hope that we can finalize a survey in two weeks, but I want to know if that's a realistic expectation. Yeah. Yeah, I think that um, we yeah we haven't seen all the feedback um, from folks on the call that you know that was provided over email quite yet. Um, so we'll be looking forward to diving into that um, with with Aaron and with Laura. Um, I I think like I said before, aiming to at least launch the survey by the date of the public meeting is a good goal. I think we want to capture that momentum. If people are in the room, we give them the. We could give them a paper survey. We could do it on an iPad with them. We can give them a QR code so they can do it once they get home. I, I think it's important to capture that momentum. Um, as far, so that's, I guess that's the answer about timeline. As far as content of the feedback, I think helping us understand, you know, what you want to learn from the survey. Um, Laura, something Laura has emphasized as an example is, you know, key destinations. Where do people want to go in Concord? Are people, is it important um, that we make focus on connections to the library, to the school, et cetera? You know, some of these things um, uh, relating to key destinations. So uh, an idea like that is very helpful to us. Like, what is the question that you would like this survey to help you answer? Excellent. Um, I do want to be respectful of your time, Katrina and Ralph. Um, and so do we have any final questions from the committee? And um, and then since we're about to lose Stantec, I, I will take a quick, very quick questions from, from the public before we lose them. Um, any other committee questions from Stantec, for Stantec before they head off? Okay. And with that, Tanya, do you have a question for no, Stantec? Thank you. No, I raised my hand because I was um, concerned about a procedural matter that, that um, if if you see the comments from the committee members without outside of an open meeting, it may not be consistent with the open meeting law. I'm Katrina and Erin can, but I'm not sure that it shouldn't be when you are aware of what everybody is saying to you. That's not a quorum communication. Um, is that is that for me or for the for Stantec? Because I do not have access to the other committee members. Um, no, well, no, but Katrina said she would discuss other people's input with you. That means you have access to everyone's input. I'm just raising this as something to you. maybe check with check with Kari. Yes, um, thank you. Yeah, and uh, about the external things, it's good to have the state come and, and but we also know that in other sensitive issues such as the reformatory branch trail the state has its own ideas and uh it's better if we if we work as a community here in that instance for example to provide safe commuter bike paths that don't necessarily have to use whatever the state is prioritizing or insisting on even though communities might want to explore other other uh, venues for that purpose, which is a good purpose. I support the purpose, just not what the state wants. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. Um, so with that, Katrina and um, and Ralph, thank you so much for your time. And um, you'll be getting more feedback on the survey from from our members by email. Thank, thank you, you all everybody. for your time. Look Thank forward to much. seeing you guys throughout the next year. Bye. Bye. All right. Thanks, everybody. Um, I'm going to take things, uh, I'm going to sort of revert back to our original agenda very briefly here um, and just take a moment to welcome our newest member. Um, uh, who Mariana Hill has joined us for her first official meeting. And so Mariana, I know you introduced yourself at our last meeting, but if you wanna just take a minute and say, um, say hello, whatever you wanna to say to the committee, that would be great. 
Thanks, Laura. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, so nice to see you. And I'm really glad to be officially um, a new committee member here. Um, I'm Mariana Hill. I um, I grew up in Concord um, and recently moved back. Um, I'm now a resident of West Concord um, with my husband and small toddler. Um, my background is in civil engineering. I did my undergrad at Tufts. Um, and I have some experience um, now in mostly sort of stormwater management and planning. Um, and I've done a little bit of work in, um, in transportation planning and engineering as well. Um, so looking forward to, to working on all of this um, together and um, learning a lot from all of you. Thanks for having me. I'm certainly looking forward to looking, we're learning from you too, because um, I know you have lots of great knowledge to share with us. Um, all right, so with that, I think that, um, I, I, well, I, I'm gonna go through very quickly a chair's report. It's basically just a few announcements, and then we're gonna come back to our, our transportation study, tech engagement and outreach strategy, which does include finish, finishing up our conversation about survey feedback. Um, for a chair's report this week, um, or this th at this meeting, all I have to say is that um, tomorrow is um, the Mass Dot Moving Together conference in Boston. There is in-person and virtual attendance options. Um, uh, I will be attending in person if anybody else happens to be going. Um, love to meet up with you there, although not a quorum of you because that would that would be against the rules. Um, and. Uh, and then the other thing I'll just very briefly mention is that this week, the national nonprofit America Walks is urging elected officials, public officials, transportation professionals, advocates, and individuals um, to participate in the National Week Without Driving. And the point of this campaign is to encourage those who have the option to drive regularly to understand the barriers and challenges that non-drivers face when moving safely in their communities. Um, I think this is a wonderful invitation to try a mode of transportation that you don't use regularly so that you understand how, walk in somebody else's shoes for a day. So it doesn't have to be a week, it can be a day, it can be one trip. Um, so I just wanted to make folks aware of that. I did invite Rev Cataldo to ride in my bucket to work um, if he wanted to ride to the train station. He has not agreed formally yet, but we're in conversation. Um, so uh, the bucket of my bicycle, for those of you who may not know that I ride a crazy cargo bicycle, I wasn't going to carry him in a bucket. Um, all right. So with that, um, I'm going to go to uh, back to our transportation study, tech engagement and outreach strategy. So this is talking about um, both the workshop and the survey. Um, and first, I just want to talk briefly about the October 17th public workshop. Um, then we'll go back to our survey conversation. Um, both of these are very sensitive and time and, and very important. So I do want to make sure we get both of them. Um, first of all, I want to confirm that all the TAC members are available on the 17th from 6:30 to 8:30. I'm seeing some thumbs up and nodding heads. Excellent. Mark, is that a question or is that a yes? I mean, not Mark, uh, Dan, sorry, I was looking at the wrong screen. Okay, great. Um, next, I have a little proposal for us and how we might take a role at um, the public workshop. Um, so we know that there's gonna be a series of interactive boards that Stantec um, people will be standing at. Um, and so I wanted to propose that each of us pair up with a Stantec representative stand with a board and be engaged in conversations with people who are at the workshop around these different topics. Since it's, a, since it's a two hour meeting, I think we could even rotate. So we each get to talk about two topics instead of just one. And then we'll have a, uh, our next meeting will be on the 24th. So it'll be a great opportunity for us to come back, share any highlights from those conversations, share any reflections from the public wor um, workshop, we will have to call it as a, a meeting of our of our committee since we'll all be there anyway, um, but this will be a good opportunity for us to actually take a role and be like in the thick of it. So that's my proposal. Happy to hear other proposals, um, but uh, let me know what you think. <laughs> Nick's not sure. 
All right. Well, do do we? I don't. I don't think we need to have a motion on this. Um, so I think we'll just move ahead with a tacit agreement that that's what we'll all do next when I think we that's go. That's a good there. way of keeping an eye on things. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, making sure that we're all not all milling around at the refreshments table. Um, <laughs> I doubt that's what anybody would do. But um, all right. Um, I, I I just want to say that I I that and other ways of committee members to get direct input from people here from the mouth, not just what they fill out is really good because there'll be a lot of surprises, I'm, I'm sure. Absolutely. I think it'll also be a great opportunity for us to interface directly with the different Stantec folks that we're working with. So building those relationships as well. Um, okay, great. Go ahead, Erin. I was just gonna say that I think it'll also be really great because we can encourage people to be filling out their own sticky notes and to be writing things on the boards because somebody might say something and might think, oh, well, somebody else has already thought of that or this isn't something that we were all really need to talk about. But you can encourage them to know that your, you know, your opinion is important and we want to hear from everyone, not just the people who like to write on sticky notes and put them on the boards. Um, so we, we, I think, it's a really good opportunity for us to um, encourage people to really be a part of it. Um, and that you all can be a big part of um, helping people feel confident in their, in their opinions. That's a perfect segue into my next topic about this, which is outreach and getting people to the workshop. As Terry um, mentioned, this is only two weeks away. I think having done a lot of meetings like this, two weeks is kind of perfect. You know, we're, we're not stretching out our, our campaign too long that people hear about it and then forget about it. Um, so I started putting up some posters around town um, today, but I didn't get that many out because I started late in the day. Um, I'm going to continue to put um, posters up throughout the week. Um, but having done a lot of community organizing kind of work, I know that posters are pretty ineffective. Um, the most effective way to get somebody to show up at any community event, especially one like this, is a personal invitation. Um, so I would like to ask this committee to take a very active role in making sure that we have a good turnout and not just like volume of people, but have a, a turnout of people that need to be in the room. Um, so, uh, you know, I'd like us to have a brief conversation about who are the people that we need to target for outreach to make sure that they show up at this. Obviously, other committees we have easy access to. We can send the chairs invitations and ask them to go. Um, but if there are particular committees that we might, you know, drop in on to make a public comment at the end of their meeting um, or specific organizations that you have relationships with, specific business leaders that need to be engaged in this. Um, I'd love for us to sort of each take home at least a few, you know, individuals, organizations, committees that we're going to sort of pound and ask them to come to the, this event. Um, so I want to ask if anybody has any sort of initial thoughts on that or any ideas of people that they would like to invite. And I will mention that I do have um, posters and infographics and um, things like that that I can give you if you want to give someone something physical um, or if you want to send it out in an email to your neighborhood or something like that. Um, but it's also going to go on social media. It's going to be in the newspaper on Friday. Um, the sandwich boards are out and have them in it. Um, we're doing sort of our, our normal things like news and notices to try to get the word out. But um, like Laura said, I'm I'm very confident that we can get the word out and people won't be poster blind to it either because it's it's fresh and in their face as opposed to something that has been hanging around for a while. So um, I think we're going to have a really um, I think we have a, a really good opportunity here and you all can be a, a big part of getting the word out. Mark, you want to go ahead first? Yeah, I'll just uh, yes, Eric, that sounds good. Please um, send us uh, whatever kind of um, you know flyer or announcement or whatever that kind of looks semi-official. I think that's easy to pass on or print out and pass on. Thanks. Sorry, go ahead, uh, Mariana. Why don't you go ahead? I think um, emphasizing or just at least clarifying the drop-in nature of the meeting too um, 
is a, a resonating factor for a lot of folks who aren't available that whole two hour window um, or parents that can maybe take shifts. Um, and that that's that's definitely a, a plus compared to most evening meetings. Bill, go ahead. Can children come? Absolutely. <laughs> we, yeah. you know, I, I don't know if we have the budget <laughs> for it, but at a lot of community meetings that I have organized, we actually have childcare available. But I think that this may, maybe we can think about that for the February meeting because we'll have more lead time. But I do think um, thinking about childcare is always a good thing. So I, I think Nick actually hit on a great point and that is um that um inviting pa parents of children is really important in this process um and Aaron if you could send something that's in a format that is easily postable to Facebook that would be good so if, if it's either in PDF or in JPEG um you know I I can post it up in a number of different sort of online communities um, that will broadcast pretty far and wide. Um, the other thing is if you can um, communicate with the school department um, and the school department can then in turn communicate with the various uh, parent teacher groups, they have um, month, uh, excuse me, weekly newsletters that are distributed to the whole school, school community. So that might be an easy way of getting the um, the word out. Um, so uh, also, if you bring toys, Laura, you got toys, right? I can bring my box of transportation themed children's books. That's nice. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> um, I do want to emphasize, though, and I am not kidding about this, personal invitations. I mean, those parent newsletters are very long. There are a lot of posters on the poster boards. People get poster blind. I do think that coming up, I mean, I call people. I actually, I'm a millennial and I pick up the phone and I call people and ask them to come to things because that is actually pretty effective. There's a reason that we still do phone banking in 2023 um, for political campaigns. Um, so I do think that having a list of, of organizations, of um, you know, individuals in the community whose voices are um, are going to be important in this conversation is really important. Go ahead, Nick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. This is maybe a little off topic, but the question about the scope of the study. Um, to me, it sounds like the study is very large in terms of the scope, and the thing I fear is that we've discovered in talking about, it's just me talking with other people uh, on TAC or not on TAC, wherever, over the years, the situation in, Con in Concord is extremely complicated. Uh, and I love to use my street, uh, Monument Street, as an example. You know, I, I fear that we could get something that says, well, you should put bike paths there or sidewalks. And the complications of doing that, I, I think so too. But the complications of doing that on a street like Monument Street are enormous. And unless you have driven up and down Monument Street and understand the complexity of doing that, um, I, I think you're, you, you could just get very superficial suggestions. That's, that is a real serious fear. Now, I think you could conceivably put sidewalks on Monument Street, but it's a difficult engineering task, okay? I don't think we should shy away from it. It is impossible to safely walk from my house at the end of Monument Street to town. I would love to. I, there have been times I wanted to, but I'm not gonna do it. There are too many blind curves, the road's too narrow. It's just, it's just insanity. And interestingly, 99% of the bicyclists I see on this road, they're recreational bicyclists. They aren't people trying to get someplace to work or run an errand. So I, my 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 issue is that that the problems we have are very real and very particular. They 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 vary by street, they vary by neighborhood, they vary depending on how you're trying to get around, what your mode is. Okay, 
And my fear is that the study is going to come up with generalities that in practice are not useful. Um, so if I can respond to that at least a little bit, or I might be able to help answer that question. So one of the things that we have um, asked for as a part of this is to create a sort of design manual, if you will, that will be specific to Concord because we know that Concord, it's not like any place else, right? It's it's special in its historic roads, it's special in its natural resources, in its community. So it's going to be looking at taking best practices that are used um, in terms of how do you create a sidewalk that works? How do you create a bike lane that works? And also melding it into the historic. So it's not going to be a um, road by road manual of how we're going to fix this road because I I don't know what the cost of that would be, but I think it would be astronomical. <laughs> um, but instead, this will help provide us with um, sort of a uh, something to look back at as best practices and um, helpful ideas and maybe places to look for if we're stuck so that we have something to move forward with, um, if that's helpful to what you're saying, Nick, because I, I, I don't- I, I don't, I, I, my fear is the thing you just described will wind up on a bookshelf because it will be of no use in dealing with the problem on Monument Street. That's my fear. You, you've helped me articulate it. Just well, to- I, I have a, I sort of have a question, sort of, I share your fear, Nick. I really do share your fear. And I think that one of the things that I would love to see come out of this study is, you know, we can't address every street. Like there's just no way that we can address every street in a planning process. But what I'd love to see us do is figure out, is Monument Street the, the street that we need to do first? And if so, then have a then have some plans for Monument Street. But, you know, Monument Street may not be the first street. It may need to be 62. It may need to be, you know, Lowell Road. It may need, to, you know, it could be any of, you know, it could be Thoreau Street that goes to the high school. You know, we have lots of, um, I think that this is an opportunity for us to get started. And I would like to see us come out with like, really specific recommendations for like, these are the corridors. We know we can't do every road, but we know that if we do these corridors and we have these design recommendations for these streets, um, we can move forward with more interconnectivity. Um, I'd obviously love to see us address Monument Street because that's a terrifying road to bike on. I do bike on that when I absolutely have to, and it's horrifying. Um, go ahead, Mark. Yeah. Um... Yeah, these are all the important points. So, I mean, one of the things we have to consider going along is the relationship of the TAC to the um, consult, you know, town staff managed um, consultant study and the TAC, you know, um, doesn't have to agree with everything or can think of other things and is not limited to whatever the consultant is doing the TAC is the TAC and the TAC advises the select board, um, which is another kind of level of things. Um, can say we like this part, we don't like that part, et cetera, et cetera. We're not, we're all individuals and the committees are all different. Um, uh, very quickly, I just wanted to mention it because we're all together here, it's really important in terms of uh, to pin down how we're going to quickly, how, how this um, survey that the consultant would like. And I didn't hear Aaron object to, to to have ready to fly on the 17th. Um, and I appreciate that it doesn't have to be, you know, ready before then. I think that helps. Uh, and if we can have another meeting a week from today, um, would the would the process to uh, not um, violate the open meeting law, which if you know individuals here outside of a meeting, unless it's forgivably posted for the public first, so the public has access. We we cannot send things either directly or indirectly between or among a quorum. So if all the other members, five members sent something that goes to Laura, that's communication among a quorum outside of meeting, so we can't do that. But should we um, then continue to send suggestions to Aaron who will share them with the consultant and then either Aaron or the consultant or in combination, they will complete a survey and maybe do a second draft 
to run by the committee on on the um, October 10th, or you know, I just want to pin down the nuts and bolts that um, is as effective as we can be. Um, you segued me. You segued beautifully into my next half of this um, agenda item, Mark, um, which is I was going to ask if this if the members of the TAC would be open to having a short meeting next week um, to continue discussion of the survey after we've all had a chance to send, um, you know, we, I, I know that I, after listening to the presentation and having this discussion tonight might have slightly different feedback on some of the survey points. So I'd like to revise some of my survey feedback and send it to Aaron again um, and have a second draft to review, discuss, um, and then send more feedback on. So I wanted to ask if this, I can do a doodle poll. I can I can find a, a time that might work for all of us and we don't have to meet for two hours, I think, to discuss. I would hope not. Um, we could get it done in an hour, maybe 45 minutes, maybe even less, um, just to continue the conversation about the survey. Um, but I, what, what are folks thinking on having a meeting next week? I could do it. Dan, okay, great. Phil, excellent. All right, so I will um, coordinate with everybody to find a time that works. It may be the Tuesday night, again, works for everybody, but um, I'll just check and see. Um, uh, and the other piece of it is, I, I want it, I, I don't think that a committee meeting is the, oh, go, go ahead, Mark, sorry. Just, just real quick, I was gonna say that um, uh, depending on the, Bandwidth time, you know, available time for Aaron and um, and the consultant or whatever. Um, it's even possible, um, uh, or I think it's even useful if the only thing that we have to look at before that meeting would be an assemblage, not necessarily a clean assemblage of things. And um, maybe Aaron can check with the. You know, I think about this as a policy, good or bad, make a decision um, and check with the town clerk about, um, you know, in a, just like there's um, a packet for the select board that gets posted before the meeting. So the public has access to whatever is being considered at the meeting. You know, even if there are kind of a pastiche of um, lots of comments at the meeting, people could could uh, weigh in and sort of say, I think those are the really important questions and these are less important or these can be combined. I, I don't know, just to, just my thought to maybe help. Mark, just a clarifying question on that. Are you saying that you would rather not see a new second draft that responds to everyone's comments? You would rather see the existing draft with attached comments from all the committee members? You're saying that Either one has some utility, but um, if it if it I would rather see the second one than nothing, uh, nothing changed. Do you know what I'm saying? In other words, it it takes work to put everything in the same format and and all that, and there's you know time uh, limitations. So I'm just saying that um, it it doesn't have to be in final format for the committee to. Um, kind of way in, you know, like, for instance, suppose it's too long. We could talk about what should be cut, that type of thing. So I just think it doesn't have to be a clean draft. It can be a messy draft. Uh, I don't know if that's clear to people. I don't know if it's helpful. It's just the thought I wanted to share. Do other committee members have feelings about what they'd like to see it before or at the at the next meeting? Or before, well, ideally before the next meeting. I think we should have several days to review whatever this, whatever document it is. No ideas. Go I ahead. Like, I, I think it, it would be nice. I feel like it would be nice to get together and kind of see what everybody's concerns are because I feel like we're kind of operating in a vacuum right now. <clears throat> you know, I, I know Nick has concerns. It sounds like Mark has concerns and. You know, I'm just trying to figure out how we do this. From, you know, where are we going to coordinate all these these points rather than just getting together and sitting down and hashing it out next week? Why, why don't you just post everybody's feedback on the website? Then it's public and, and we all see what each other think. It has no reason not to. If that's the, the way that the committee wants to do it, that's 
we can certainly do that. Um, the, light I, of day, the light of day shining on this stuff is the best thing. <laughs> Hold on, sorry. Somebody was texting me. But anyway, I think everything out in the open and in the clear light of day is beneficial. You know, no one should be embarrassed by anything I said. Um, no, I'm, I'm curious to hear specific concerns you have because you, you have some pretty strong feelings about this survey. <laughs> well, I do. I, I did want to ask sort of us to get into this a little bit just so that we have a little bit of prep for us to go back and and submit any more comments that we have on the survey but i am i so i just want to acknowledge before we do that um we had another large agenda item tonight that we're not going to get to um we were going to talk about public transit we were aaron has prepared a briefing for us and i feel bad that we're bumping it um we had talked about at our next meeting october 24th coming to this meet coming coming with ideas for public transit services. I think that we should push that off. Um, given that we're in the midst of survey development, we're gonna have a lot to talk about on the 24th after the public workshop. Um, so I just wanna check in on re, I mean, cutting that meeting agenda item tonight um, and cutting it from next week's or our, our next week in, in three week meeting as well. Phil, go ahead. I, I just, I'm a little unclear, um, sorry, because um, I've been unclear about everything for a few days, <laughs> um, but um, is this discussion of public transit sort of expansion of existing public transit or some something new along the lines of what Nick was thinking about? Yeah, let me review. We talked, we had a conversation about public transit. I believe it was at our last meeting. And we said that we would like a briefing from Aaron about all of the different um, grant proposals and uh, and uh, ideas put forward by the town in the past about starting a local public transit service. So, you okay. know, there, there was a workforce shuttle, there was the trolley, there, like, there were a bunch of different programs that have been put out. So that was what the briefing tonight was going to be. And then what we were, what we all agreed to do is come to the 24th with our idea of a local public transit service that would meet local need because of our last conversation where we were all in agreement that public transit is very important and we should be developing ideas for a new public transit service. But I, I think that we may need to put that off a little bit. It does sort of get into that later public meeting that we're going to have in in February it sounds like we're going to be presenting transportation alternatives next year so I think if we push it off for a couple of weeks we'll probably be safe um and still have lots of time to explore those before before um Stantec puts those items into the plan um so um so I want to make sure that we get to a uh, public comment no later than 8:55 so with that, I do want to give everybody a little bit of time to say what they felt was missing, what they um, were excited to see in there. If we can do uh, both of those things, that would be great. But we do need to be brief because I do want to make sure that we um, are able to end this meeting on time. So we have a little over 10 minutes. But I think, Nick, you had some, some very strong feelings. So I would be interested to have you start as well. About the survey or what? About, about the survey. We're going back to our survey to finish our survey discussion so that we can be prepared okay. um, for our meeting. Next I, it's a long document I wrote. So, you know, I don't know how to summarize it. I think there were things that were left out um, that were, uh, if you want me to just find it, hold on. Uh, Yeah, it, 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 and this may, you know, this, we weren't provided any context about this survey. So we don't know what the whole design of the project is. And we don't know what other ways they're going to be collecting information. So, for instance, um, there's nothing in the survey about public transportation, you know, that whole thing about buses. There's nothing. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't ask anybody about it in any significant way. It would address the needs of many groups in town. How could we not ask? Um, and, and I, you know, I think if you could give that that slide I did on all the groups that would benefit uh, from a bus service, if you could give that to the folks at Stantec, might help them understand 
that issue, at least the way I see it. Um, I think that stuff like, I'm worried that things like electric vehicles get will creep into this. The only way that electric vehicles are relevant to our discussion is if we need to supply infrastructure for them, okay? They're just another kind of car. And if we need charging stations, fine, then that should come out somehow. But the fact is we're not gonna need charging stations for people who live in town. We're gonna need charging stations for visitors, right? So that tells you something about where you have to put them. So I think anything on electric vehicles should be very targeted at what infrastructure requirements they create. And I don't think they create many. Um, uh, I, I don't see how they're gonna get information about visitors and tourists. You know, how, how are we gonna find out what the needs of the businesses are or the, uh, the cultural organizations in town? Um, various segments, um, you know, and the survey does things like it talks about businesses. Like, you know, there are so many kinds of businesses in town. The needs of retail business operators are vastly different from the needs of food service operators or the people who operate the cultural organizations or the people who offer medical services, right? The, the study doesn't, the, the survey doesn't get into that at all. So, you know, my concern is that the survey is going to, the way it is, the survey is going to wind up with some very generic not very actionable information. And that's just the general stuff. You know, I got, I got like about every section I commented on. I think you need much more detail. You have to be very careful about the demographic information. Asking, chopping up income levels to that degree is absurd. It's like $50,000 or something. You're kidding. I've never seen a survey do that. And that's a great way to get people to not respond. And I don't even know how you define income. There are a lot of people in town who live on fixed incomes. There are people in town who live on their principal of their investments, right? That's not income, it's principal, right? I, I don't know how people answer that question. Anyway, I have lots of stuff. I think you should just share it with everybody and the public. I have a question for you, Nick, which is, do you feel like the specifics that you're looking for, I feel like the specifics you're looking for from business sound like something that we hope to get through the stakeholder roundtables and more one-on-one -on -one conversations. Fine. Okay, that you have a, you have a belief and a hope that hasn't been shared with everybody. Okay, we don't know. The, we don't know. No, wait. We don't know what the process is. The first we heard of it is tonight, right? We started to hear a glimmer of it tonight with no details. What, what I would love to see, because I'm an information guy, I'd love to see what the information flow is. Where along this year and a half do we pick up these pieces of information and where do we get them from? Is At the moment, as far as I could tell, the survey was the only thing that does it. I, I, maybe others can help me, but I've, I'm pretty sure that those items were in one of the slides, like when we get information from each of those pieces and the stakeholders for their own task. There's so little information in those slides that we can imagine whatever we want about them. So one thing I think is important to remember here is that we're at the very beginning of this process. And, and we're having a meeting in two weeks that's gonna start it, That's that worries me. <laughs> yes, we're gonna start our real public engagement in two weeks. Um, so what we're what we're trying to do with the survey is trying to gather some of that initial information so that we have something to build off of. Stantec, we've given them mounds of documents and surveys, and we're gathering data and giving it to them um, so that they can start processing it and going through it and having these conversations. We're just at the sort of beginning stage. We're going to get into a lot of these details, um, and I think that that's important to recognize that like for instance um the business community we're engaging with the economic vitality manager we're talking to um the the visitor services manager we're, we're talking to these different people um to make sure that we are going about and getting this information out to people we do want to get the the visitors and the tourists um their input but a lot of them might not want to give their input so we have to see if there's a way that we can best engage with them, is that giving them a little postcard that they can bring with them and talk about, okay, how did you get here? Was it satisfactory? Was it uh, some other way you would have liked to get around Concord? Um, talk to the businesses and see how their employees get around. 
I think that, you know, this is just the beginning of the discussion and we're, uh, we're really sort of launching this whole process now. So I don't want you to feel like this is something that has been um, uh, sort of, you know, we're just presenting you with, okay, we're in the middle of the process now. We're, we're really just sort of launching it and getting into the data gathering stage so that we can start to analyze later on um, cause this is going to, we're just at the, the very start of a year plus process. Bill, go ahead. Um, thanks. So this is a kind of following up on Nick's comment. And that is, um, I think it's important for us to, um, weigh in with respect to the process that Stantec is going to use to reach out beyond, you know, whoever responds to this survey or whoever shows up at the um, at the public information session. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, one of the frequent mistakes that happens at local and state government is that they come up with a um, uh, an event and give people public notice of it two weeks before the event and expect people to show up, and and that's not the way people work. People are busy, people have very um, involved lives and they don't drop everything to show up because a bureaucrat tells them that there's a meeting coming up. Um, the way things pe people do things these days is that they participate, for example, online or they stream something or they do other you know, um, technology that provides them an opportunity to participate at their own times. Um, and if the town doesn't get savvy to that, you're not going to get a represent representative sample of what's on people's minds. So uh, I, I think it's very important to um, you know make sure that the consultant is quite clear that if that's all we're going to get is feedback from a meeting that they've set up two weeks before they've told anybody about it, that you know first of all they're not going to get ends that are very high, and second of all they're not going to very get a very representative sample. Um, second thing is on the issue about um, trying to get feedback from the, uh, the business community, um, I can tell you that um, in my experience, um, and I'm glad that Aaron is reaching out to the other management uh, level people at the town, but unless the management people have it within their work plan to um, dedicate time to reaching out to the various civic organizations that represent business owners or actual individual businesses, nothing will happen. So if um, Aaron reaches out to Beth uh, and Beth doesn't have it as part of her work plan, that she's going to be attending one or two or five meetings in the next year and talking about this plan. Well, it's just not going to happen. I, you know, I, I think Beth is wonderful, but you know, um, she's a key player, um, but she makes up her own plan. And again, same type of thing. Beth is going to do what's already in her, in her work plan. Um, same thing with, with any of the, you know, the senior staff, everybody's busy. So, um, I, you know, I think one, one thing that would be very helpful and maybe Terry can weigh in on this or, uh, maybe Megan can weigh in on this. Um, and that is that if the town wants to have the staff work on stuff, um, then the town manager needs to be make, make it quite clear from the get-go that there is a certain expectation that is to be met within a time limit. Um, and if that expectation isn't met, then um, there's a consequence. So um, I'll put it to you, Megan, that um, if this is what the town manager wants, if the town manager has it as a priority, then with respect, um, the town manager needs to tell the senior staff and the senior staff need to instruct their staff members that this is a priority and that they want action on it. Otherwise, it's going to get shoved right under the rug like everything else. Okay. At the end of the day, though, I have a more important point, and that is that the survey is good. Planning is good. Um, but one of the elements that we need to address here is that this is also part of the public information effort, um, because a lot of stuff people just don't understand. So when people are asked to weigh in on well, what do we really need or what are our priorities? Well, that's a question that's often act, asked in a vacuum. People don't really know what they want or need without having a context um, and without having some information. It's very helpful for people to make decisions after they've had some opportunity to see what their alternatives are. 
as opposed to asking a question and you know having no clue as to what their alternatives are other than more cars and less traffic. Everybody wants more cars and less traffic, right? Except me. I don't want more cars. And I think people should be stuck with traffic because that's the only way we're going to get less cars. Um, and I'm, you know, uh, un, un, um, I'm outspoken on that issue and I'm going to continue to be outspoken on that issue. Um, so enough said. Bill, Thank you. I, I appreciate that those comments. Um, Mark, very quickly, and yeah, then we're going to have to wrap up this meeting. Yeah, thanks. I just want to say that I think the, um, you know, constant criticism along the process and realizing that the outcome is going to be some kind of hopefully somewhat useful approximation that needs, you know, uh, study and intelligent analysis to actually apply. I mean, this is not, you know, a doctor who diagnoses and then operates on you. This is, um, you know, we're trying to trying to assemble information and ideas and uh, criticizing it does not mean, um, you know, criticizing it and uh, taking everything with an appropriate size grain of salt is part of the process. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Mark. Um, and I will just, before I open it up to public comment, I do want to just say, um, you know, I think that the worst case scenario would be for us to kick the can down the road. We're, I, I think that spending a lot of time planning the planning of the study, like we, as we know, it's hard to get a lot of people in a room. This public workshop is an opportunity for us all to be in the room with all the stand tech people, with town staff, with other members of the public. We're going to have lots, like this is a year long process. We are at the very beginning of a year long process. And I am eager to get us all in a room together, getting ideas down on paper. I don't think that this survey needs to be perfect. I think that it needs to be better than it is now, but it's never going to be perfect. We're never going to get all the, I mean, if I could get people to spend an hour filling out a survey about transportation, I totally would, but we've got about five to 10 minutes of people's attention. So, um, so with that, um, I am just going to say, uh, we're going to have another meeting next week. We will post it soon. We will share um, everyone's comments. I think you should decide what comments you want to share with the rest of the group. Send those to Aaron. I know that I will be um, specifically revising mine so that um, they respond to the presentation that we saw today um, and this discussion. So, um, uh, so we will have a, a, a further conversation next time. Um, with that, I'm going to open this up to uh, comments from the public. I don't think we have any of our liaisons right now, so I'm going to go straight to public comment, and I'll start with Tanya. Thank you, Laura. Laura. Uh, very nice meeting you're running. Thank you. Um, uh, about the, I, I support what Nick suggested, that committee a committee members' comments be, either be posted, because if somebody prepares a do document and it's posted at the same time, for the public as it's shared with the rest of the committee. That's supposed to be okay. Again, check with Kyrie. But I also think it's okay if say Erin were to um, prepare a composite of all the comments and post that without appropriating it to, to, to different names. That's also supposed to be okay. okay. Because as a member of the public, I I, it would be really great to know what everybody is thinking. I'm so, so grateful that you made some space in this meeting for several people to express their opinions. And thank you for that. My other comment, again, as a member of the public is uh, uh, for the October 17th meeting, um, I would recommend that it be a hybrid meeting because both for the sake of like elderly who might prefer that, some of them, and, and also people with children who who may not have childcare available that night or for whatever purpose. I mean, as long as there is that option available legally, it would be great to make use of it and, and include more people to at least inform themselves, if not comment. Thanks very much. Thank you, Tanya. Um, I just do want to quickly respond to that and say, I think that based on what Stantex presented tonight, a hybrid option might be very difficult since there's no presentation. It will just be an opportunity to go to different stations and put sticky notes. I'm not sure how, I think we would need a separate, I think we would need a separate kind of facilitated online oh, you know, event. I've been part of Zoom meetings where they have different breakout rooms and you can do that. You can set that up within the structure. 
And you I can, think that you know. I have two, Nick, but I don't think that we could have enough staff available to be facilitating in-person and virtual rooms simultaneously. Hybrid. Each one's a hybrid. I, I don't know why it has to be separate. A separate, a whole separate event mimicking it virtually might be easier than in a real-time hybrid. Um, uh, any other comments from the public? Um, and before we go off, I just did want to give um, Ed a quick moment to introduce himself. He's put in a, a, a volunteer card to join this committee. So if you want to just very briefly say hello and introduce yourself, Ed, um, please go ahead. And you are muted. Okay, thank you very much. Um, it was really instructive uh, listening to this meeting. Uh, I have more questions. Um, as someone who spent 15 years doing public surveys in small cities in Massachusetts, it was particularly interesting. And Mark and Nick, I was very interested in your comments. Uh, keep you up to work because we really need you. And uh, living in West Concord, I know some of the things you reference in passing are serious major issues for those of us who walk and those of us who are getting a little older. Thanks a lot, Sarah. All right, and with that, I would entertain a motion to close this meeting. No move. Second? Awesome, Phil. Um, Mark? How do you vote? Yes. Dan? Yes. Uh, Mariana? Yes. Nick? Aye. And Phil, and I'm an aye as well. Aye. Um, thank you all. I'll see you again next week and the week after. We're just going to become really good friends over the next month. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.